Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, webinar on Workforce Counselors Guiding Pathways for Seniors. Unfortunately, we couldn't meet together as traditionally at the South by Southwest. It's generally held in Austin yearly. And so we had to, um, we had to uh, come up with a way that we could still uh, um, share our information um, and our, um, our initiatives with you. And so we took the opportunity here to do it uh, virtual. And so as many people have been doing, we've been doing these types of conversations, these types of conversations or these types of meetings uh, with our constituents or with folks that we deal with on a daily basis. So again, thank you for taking time out of your schedules today uh, to visit with us. Our panel discussion today will be Workforce Counselors Guiding Pathways for Seniors. What we've put together here is a discussion on two initiatives that Texas, uh, the Texas Workforce Commission implemented um, in 2019. One of them was obviously the, the Workforce Career and Educational Outreach Specialist, which Lori Knight, um, who um, is a, the director and oversees the program, will be addressing. And um, also, we will be talking about our Texas Signing Day, where we've given, where we have recognized seniors in high school that are committing uh, to a certain community college, technical school, or an employer uh, following their. Um, their uh, high school years um, in, uh, in school. And so this is gonna be, it's a very informal uh, type of discussion. We hope you find this very informative. Uh, again, this was something that the Texas Workforce Commission actually laid out. We're hoping that other states and other communities around the country will be able to utilize this. We do have very important information that we can send to you at a later date if you request it. Each one of our panelists has, um, a website and phone numbers that you can actually call in or email them uh, following today's presentation. Again, we hope you find this very informative. Uh, this, um, these two initiatives, um, you may want to know how they came about. Back in 2016, Governor Greg Abbott, governor of the great state of Texas, um, charged the uh, Texas Association, uh, I mean, the Texas Education Agency and the Texas Higher Ed Coordinating Board to work together with the Texas Workforce Commission. And what he put together was this plan, and that was for us to, all of us to collectively work together, looking at ways that we could actually focus on those middle skill uh, occupations uh, for young adults. And so putting it in layman's terms, what we wanna do is we want every student from sixth grade all the way to his senior year to get as much information on any career that's out there for them. Um, what we are trying to focus on, and, and we've asked our 28 workforce boards to assist us with, is recognizing what is happening in your region um, where we can focus our, our, um, our, um, our curriculums, our, our conversations, and so that no one wastes time in, um, in getting a, um, a, a certification or any type of higher ed credential. Um, we value career and technical education. We think there is certainly value in um, those types of programs and those types of careers. Uh, we know in the past that, uh, that we, were, we used to be steered into, you know, maybe uh, to be successful, uh, we had to possess a four-year degree. Nothing wrong with that. But we also know that there are great careers out there and our panelists will, will, um, will share their experiences that there are many students out there, again, sixth grade through 12th grade, that need that assistance on identifying the, um, a career path for them. And so who else better to work with than our schools, our higher ed partners, and of course, our economic development partners and our chambers around the state, but most importantly, our uh, business partners. And so we have someone that represents our business partners, which is um, Quilon, Teal, who represents the Austin Chamber of Commerce. And then of course we have David Mosley who represents higher ed with us. And again, everyone that's on the panel represents exactly what the governor charged us with. In here, we were also charged with servicing veterans, those individuals that had a, um, that were transitioning out of foster care. And then of course those individuals that possess or that have a disability. And so each one of our panelists have been focusing and have been working with that population. 
And so we're really excited that everyone has um, started this program and has been successful. So I'm going to allow our panelists uh, to actually explain to you what they've done in 2019 uh, and how they're going to transition that uh, further. Now, one of our programs, which is the, um, the educational specialist that Lori Knight would discuss, um, the outreach specialist, um, that's a pilot program and she'll explain that. I also want the audience to understand that, you know, again, we were, we were asked to present this presentation during the March um, South by Southwest EDU week. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we've had to do it this way, but I think it's a great way for us to still share this important information. And so what I will ask the panelists is what they did in 2019 and how they were serving students and our clients and our customers like the business community and what they've done since we've experienced COVID-19 as of March of 2020. So with that said, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you'll find this very informative. And so I will now turn it over to Lori Knight. And Lori Knight was uh, tasked with, um, with overseeing this program. And so again, it is the workforce career and educational specialist that you see on your screen. So I may now, and Lori, I'm gonna turn it over to you. And if you could just further explain what the, what the purpose of this was and, and what, um, what has transpired since we first started this. Sure. So thank you, Commissioner Alvarez, uh, for the introduction. So I wanted to start by looking at the screen um, and emphasizing the fact that we call ourselves Workforce Career and Education Outreach Specialists um, as opposed to counselors because our services on campuses are meant to complement the resources that are already available. We're not there to replace anybody. Um, but our training was, uh, was very specified in that we wanted these folks to be considered uh, career education or workforce subject matter experts. And so their onboarding and the training that our team developed within the Workforce Commission um, to train up these regional folks looked at, we ran the gamut of how we were training these folks. So it wasn't just necessarily how do you talk to students, how do you um, help develop workshops to um, let students kind of um, tone or, or focus in on um, their skills for finding careers, exploring careers, writing resumes. We also looked at um, helping them to understand uh, adult education and, and literacy uh, programs. We also looked at vocational rehab programs and helping job seekers or students with disabilities um, navigate the workspace. We also looked specifically at um, how to work with foster care students or those in special populations who are dealing with very special barriers to entry. Um, and how do they find the resources? And so we connected these folks with all of these programs and all of these regions in their areas. They knew who to reach out to to be the liaison and to bridge that gap for um, the education sphere. So if we can move forward to the next slide. A little bit more about the program specifically is uh, it is a two-year pilot. We have 28 different workforce boards in the state of Texas, and they were all invited to apply for a grant. Seven different regions were awarded um, grants for, to run these two-year pilots. Of those seven uh, teams now, there are over 30 specialists working specifically with 61 different ISDs or independent school districts across the state. Again, the emphasis for this particular role was that we we're to partner with existing staff on the campuses in which we're assigned, and these offices are housed um, or each of the specialists actually have, uh, I'm sorry, have offices housed within the campuses that they work with. Um, so again, there's no duplication of services. We understand that if a student needs to explore careers, talk about career interests, um, get information on all of the options available to them after high school, they go to our specialists. If they get to the point where they're talking about changing um, college majors or looking at uh, having to change their uh, career and tech education courses, any kind of changes within scheduling, then they are rerouted to the guidance counselor on campus. And so that was also part of their training was to first day connect with the leadership on their campuses, connect with the counselors and advisors on the campuses so that they could again help to build that bridge and refer students to one another. All right, so if we go to the, to the next phase, I did want to talk a little bit about um, how we onboarded them um, and 
talk about the highlights of what some of the programs are doing that are really exciting. Um, we uh, provided a three-day onboarding session where, again, we kind of introduced the specialists to their role, what they would be doing. Uh, we gave them the resources, tools, and techniques that they would need um, to be proficient from day one. Um, but I'd like to say we gave them those roots, but we also gave them wings. We know that being a regional team uh, allows them uh, a lot of flexibility in building relationships with the students, with the faculty and staff on the campuses. Um, and so, again, it was just kind of in-depth, how, how do you start the program, but then how do you kind of special do your reading because every read is different and the demand is different. Um, always focusing on uh, local demand, uh, high wage, middle skill, um, high demand jobs, and how to communicate those with faculty, staff, and students. So uh, some of the highlights for what the, the students, I'm sorry, what the programs are doing. Um, I want to say that we've, we've been collecting data since day one. Um, our, our quarters uh, essentially get reported to us. Um, the data for each team comes into us at each quarter. And based on the, the timing of the program, our quarter started April of 2019. So we have data that's collected prior to the COVID, um, everything that's happening with that. And so from uh, April of 2019 to December of 2019, these seven programs provided over 3,000 presentations and workshops to students. They've also provided almost 600 uh, presentations, training, professional development sessions, uh, to partners, to faculty, to staff um, around those campuses. And through those workshops, um, we had over 99,000 students attend those sessions and uh, almost 24,000 adults, uh, so faculty, staff, or partners attend those sessions as well. All in all, these seven teams within those first three quarters alone um, introduced themselves to over 120,000 students. Um, and we worked one-on-one -on -one with uh, 74,784 students. So that's quite a big impact um, for a very short amount of time, considering uh, that our quarter started prior to the actual academic year beginning. And so um, most of this data is really coming from one specific quarter, um, which is highly impressive. Um, some of the highlights, uh, if you can move forward to the next screen, Julia. So this is our Borderplex team. They're in the El Paso area. Um, they, they do a lot with social media. Um, they understand they're essentially meeting students where they are. Uh, so a lot of their uh, services, um, they're attainable through social media um, or they can be requested online. Uh, they call themselves Grind Talk and uh, so because they're talking to students about the daily grind and teachers can request their services uh, by gear. So they could say, I want gear one, gear two, gear three, or I want all the, all the gears. Um, and every gear has a different focus. It has a different total number of sessions that they have to work through with students. Um, so they're very organized, um, but they're also, again, really pushing social media to get to those students. The next slide focuses on uh, capital area, which is the Travis County or around Austin, Texas. Um, there are two specific uh, ISDs that border the city of Austin, and a lot of those folks who live there will commute into the city of Austin every day for work. Um, but yet we noticed that, or the specialists noticed that uh, the career and tech education programs that were available on those campuses didn't incorporate the industries that were in, in high demand, that provide high wage, that offer middle skill jobs, um, specifically healthcare and IT. So our team, um, or with the specialists, the regional teams, with their training, understood they needed to be the conduit to bring those groups together. Um, and so they engaged employers, they brought in industry, they brought in economic developers, um, and they started to have conversations with the career tech faculty and administrators. And so those two ISTs are now building CTE programs that will lead students to certifications um, and building the skills within the IT industry as well as healthcare. So we're really excited about that program as well. Um, the following uh, slide shows uh, in the lower Rio Grande Valley, which is South Texas, um, some of our middle school students, these are seventh graders, 
um, they are they're doing an, an activity we call the onion peel, which is what we taught them. Uh, one of the one of the activities we taught them, and essentially you ball up a bunch of questions in a ball and you toss it around, and every student who catches it gets to open uh, the layer of the onion, ask the question, and then the kids sitting around on the computers get to dive into Texas Workforce Commission uh, career exploration tools to come up with the answers. And so they are exploring industry, they're exploring occupations, uh, they're exploring all kinds of things. And for many, it's a, a first look into occupations that aren't the traditional um, kinds of occupation ideas that students have. Um, so it kind of exposes them to things uh, are opportunities that exist within industries they're already interested in, but they may not be, they may only be focused or knowledgeable about one or two occupation titles, and this kind of exposes them to a lot more. And then the following slide, um, this was a, a program that was put together by our uh, folks out in West Central Texas, which is the Abilene area. And they wanted to give power to the students um, when it came to career videos. So rather than um, providing them links to some of the resources we already had. They asked uh, the students, they empowered the students to create their own career videos, including interviews with folks or just showing people um, on the job, actions in the job. And they got the community involved and essentially they awarded uh, the top three students um, got scholarships, but they brought the community in and had a screening at one of the local theaters um, to see the top 20 um, entries uh, for those videos and so all the students in the community got excited about it because they got recognition uh, and they everybody got to see their career videos on screen which is great um, and you can go ahead and move forward to the next slide julia so i wanted to talk about what has been happening with our teens ever since covid 19 and the stay in place order was put in place uh, essentially our teams we barely skipped a beat uh, we have been conducting monthly um, continuous what we call booster training, where we meet virtually once a month to continue training with the teams. And so we've kind of bumped that up to now bi-weekly. And what we're doing is we share uh, what we're doing, how we're still connecting with students, how we're tracking um, our impact, and we're sharing resources. So some of the exciting things that have been happening um, in Central Texas, um, they uh, did not, uh, again, didn't skip a beat. And so what they did last week was they provided 47 workshops for the students that they work with. And another exciting thing that all of our teams have done is they're working very closely with the ISDs that they originally had contracts with, but they've also expanded their reach to um, any schools within the districts, not just you know specific schools that they're contracting. Um, myself and anybody who's on these education outreach teams, we all are very passionate and care deeply about helping students. And so we've expanded um, our reach to any student um, who wants to, to have access to these resources. And so um, 47 workshops were conducted last week in Central Texas. Um, and they ran the gamut for the content was from career exploration and research to um, getting information about registered apprenticeship to applying for jobs, writing resumes, prepping for interviews. And um, they had over 500 students attend those workshops. And so now what some of the schools in the area are doing is they're requiring their students to attend some of those workshops as part of their mandatory curriculum for, uh, for the students working remotely. And each workshop has uh, dedicated workshops that have been built around that content. And so now the teachers are distributing those to students and they're completing them and turning, in, turning them in for grades. Um, that's one thing that's exciting. West Central Texas, um, out in the Abilene area, they are conducting uh, daily webinars and also uh, videos that they're providing. Each week um, is centered on a separate industry that they're focusing on. And so all of the content that they deliver changes week to week based on industry or high demand occupations and wages within those industries. And they're connecting employers to students through those webinars and videos as well. And then finally out in the capital area, um, out in Austin, the Austin team worked directly with our team to build two uh, workbooks. One is middle school centered and focused and the other is high school um, career readiness focused. And uh, essentially what we did is we worked together to build the content on them and then our team digitized them um, in PDF format so that they can be distributed to students um, digitally. 
and students can work through the workbooks, all the content in the workbooks, all the exercises and activities in the workbooks. Uh, they can do it digitally, so they don't have to print a copy to actually work with it, um, should they want to. But there are also schools have been, who have been taking these workbooks, printing them out, and then distributing them, dropping them off um, to students who don't have access to the internet right now. So that's how we're currently working with students. And again, we're sharing what is working within each region on our uh, teams, on our booster meeting teams, so that other regions can take best practices and replicate it in their own area. So Lori, that's exactly what I was gonna say is, what I like is um, that you guys are working so closely with the parents as well. And so how you've engaged parents in the discussions early on. And so I compliment you on that. We know that that's an important key. Uh, some of the things that I want our, our listeners and our viewers to understand is that there is a difference between the specialists, like you said, and the counselors. And so that they are to complement each other. And I love that. You know, we certainly don't want to take the role of the counselor. We're there just to support them with the right. tools that we have and the resources that we have here at the agency and that, and that TWC has allowed them to have. Um, I also like the idea that because of areas that make up our, our state, we have pockets where the majority of the folks live in rural communities. And so your counselor or I should say your specialists have been really good about addressing that. And sometimes that means having to speak multiple languages. And so yes, uh, knowing that your specialists uh, are capable of speaking both English and Spanish, maybe in other languages, that's certainly very helpful, especially when there's, a, there's, a, there's that, um, that barrier. And so we appreciate that. I did want to mention, and, and you said, just to point it out, we were very strategic on where these specialists were placed. And there are some ISDs and campuses that have career counselors. Um, but we made sure that we went into areas highly rural um, and in low socioeconomic areas where some of those students may not have access to somebody who was a, a career counselor or advisor or specialist. Um, so we were very um, adamant about making sure that they were placed uh, in the most efficient and effective ways. Uh, and yes, uh, a large majority of our specialists are bilingual. And I do know that the literature that you hand out to them and on our website and the book, the literature that you, you give your specialists is in both English and Spanish, so, so thank you for that. I also appreciate the fact that you continue to reference that individuals or these students have options. Um, you know, too many times people are informed that, that students, you know, it, unless they go this career path or this educational path, they're gonna be successful, but we know that students have options, not alternatives. So thank you for stressing yes, that to young adults. Now I may come back to you okay. because like I said, uh, we do have um, speaking next will be Kui Lan Teo and Kui Lan is the uh, Vice President of Talent and Workforce for the Austin Chamber. And she's worked really closely with, um, with Lori Knight and her program. Matter of fact, uh, Kui Lan also serves as one of our board members here at the, uh, one of our boards um, on the cap Capital Board. And so with that, Kui Lan, can you tell us how how this has helped you with um, addressing the needs of your industry partners? Yes. Um, thank you, Commissioner Alvarez. Um, first of all, I really would like to uh, let you know that we're really appreciative um, that you and the Texas Workforce Commission uh, for helping put this together and also for your efforts in the education community. Um, I understand that the Austin Chamber is the only economic uh, development organization un uh, involved under this grant. So just to let you know, we're very appreciative. Uh, first of all, I'd like to provide some background information about the Austin Chamber of Commerce. So we represent about 2,200 businesses in the Austin metro area, and we spend about a close, close to about a third of our budget, annual budget, on education and workforce initiatives and programs in the region. So we represent the economic interests of five counties in Central Texas, which is Travis, Williamson, Bastrop, Hayes, and Caldwell. And um, one of the reasons uh, as to why we're participating in this grant is because we have a very long-term partnership with UT's Ray Marshall Center, which have also been tracking our high school graduates for more than a decade now. So we know that in the Austin region, about 63% of our graduates pursue some form of post-secondary education following fall after graduation. However, 37% of our high school graduates do not. Therefore, the role of the Texas uh, Workforce Commission's Workforce Specialists play and can play a very impactful role in our school districts, informing students about the career opportunities that they have in the region after graduation as they enter the labor market. 
So the Austin Chamber also produces a monthly job postings report for the metro area. So we can tell you that on average, we have about 60,000 available job openings in our region each month. And about 20% of those are in tech, which is not a surprise. However, there are about 24,000 available job postings each month that still pay an annual medium wage of between 30 to 65,000 in our metro area. And of these 24,000 jobs in this category and pay range, about a fifth or close to 5,000 would require more than a high school diploma, but less than a bachelor's degree. While 62% of these jobs would require a high school diploma or less. So that is to say, we still have a good number of career opportunities in diversified industries that are still available in our region. And the chamber has two approaches towards workforce and education. One is called Direct to College uh, 70, which I'll explain later. Um, but the one that we're actually really more concentrated on today is Direct to Work 30, which is DTW 30. These are the regional goals that we have set in terms of post-secondary and career success following high school graduation. So we're hoping that 30% of the kids or high school uh, graduates in our region that don't pursue post-secondary education that enter the workforce would actually be career ready. So under DTW, um, the goal is to provide and improve uh, career skills and reduce talent gaps for in-demand career fields. Under this TWC grant, the Austin Chamber is working with five regional school districts. And as Laurie has mentioned, uh, there is a concentrated effort on campuses that have a larger economically disadvantaged population. So next slide, please. So one of the things I like to emphasize uh, is that we're doing this through a few ways. One of it is internally at the chamber, we have something called the Talent Ambassador Program. So this is how the chamber acknowledges workforce education commitments made by local businesses. And as you can see on this slide, there are various ways in which a business can participate in the program. Uh, you can offer internships, apprenticeships, um, be a guest speaker, um, offer job site tours of your company. And um, we have managed to digitize the process of volunteer opportunities through the Talent Ambassador Program. So local businesses can tell us um, their edu which educational institution that they would like to collaborate with or school district and what their engagement priorities are rather than have the chamber make frequent requests uh, to the business community for engagement. So this process can, can, this process can also be easily replicated by any chamber or economic development group out there under their, their own CRM platforms. The chamber would also like to see more dual enrollment opportunities that lead to industry certifications, since this is really a very good first step in entering the labor market straight out of high school. So due to the efforts of the Texas Workforce Commission, we're also seeing more interest in Texas career signing days uh, uh, around March and April of each year now. So in addition to the efforts of the workforce specialists uh, currently at the COVID, as mentioned by Laurie uh, um, earlier on the virtual career readiness workbooks, we've also started looking into virtual participations as well as creating YouTube videos to educate the middle and high school students in the region. We are also helping with teacher externship opportunities. Knowing the situation right now, uh, we are exploring virtual externships and even internships in the future to further engage businesses and continue the engagement with the school districts. Another idea is to approach uh, businesses and create high quality videos in the future on the type of skill sets that's necessary for their industry. So one good opportunity through this virtual engagement is that parents can also be educated on the different career pathways, not just for their children, but for, also for themselves. So under, as I mentioned earlier, under the Direct to College 70, uh, the chamber actually has an agreement with nine regional school districts, and we've helped about 100,000 students gain access to over a billion dollars worth of college aid uh, in the past decade. And for the class of 19, I believe the economic impact for our region was 150 million. So one of the ways that we found success in this program was that we have intentionally text message reminders to high school students and their parents on the 50 plus financial events that the chamber uh, has every single year in fall and spring. Um, and we, as a next step, are looking to evolve this 
text message, uh, text messaging platform capability uh, to sort of educate parents and the students on the upskilling opportunities as well. So we look forward to our continued collaboration with the workforce specialists, uh, as Laurie have mentioned. Next slide, please. As you can see, uh, we've been engaged with the business community, and this is actually a slide from a, um, we call it an industry focus fair. So this was a healthcare um, event that we did in October of last year. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, and I mentioned the talent amb ambassador program. So we also make concentrated efforts on acknowledge acknowledging businesses uh, for their participation of the community. We have the Hilton here, which offers scholarships to students. Uh, we have a be a CEO uh, mentor and be a CEO for a day program as well. Next slide, please. And um, as Laura has mentioned, the TWC uh, workforce specialists have actually seen a huge participation with the business community uh, through our chamber of this brand in the past as well. So again, I would like to thank the Texas Workforce Commission for the opportunity to participate in this grant and their strong support and advocacy for Governor uh, Abbott's tri-agency efforts. Thank you. So Quilon, great presentation. And I love the fact that you continue to uh, include your involvement with the uh, Lori's workforce specialist. I mean, that was the intent of this program mm -hmm. and uh, the intent of this, actually this whole uh, presentation is how we would start off with the specialists early and then how we could engage conversations with the business community, which you represent. And then of course we would lead on to our higher ed partners. One of the things that I found very fascinating about your presentation was that you referenced text reminders, you know, the, the, this platform that you have. I mean, how amazing is that? I mean, these were probably things that we may have been doing. I'm sure there was some talk about it, just a reminder, reminding our parents and our students about uh, certain tours that they were eligible for. Um, you know, you had, you mentioned uh, site tours on one of your slides. Yes. That's super important because I know that many young adults um, don't, have never been exposed to some of these various careers that are out there. So I find it fascinating that some folks that live in rural Texas or in rural communities have never been to big municipal uh, places like Austin. I mean, we, we, we are, even though we're in Travis County here in Austin and you talked about all the job openings that you have and how the IT industry is booming here, you know, there are a lot of people that live in the surrounding area that have not ever been to Austin. And I find that fascinating and I find that interesting. So thank you for exposing those school districts for, you know, with options that they have when they grow up, you know. Everyone right now wants to be a, a cybersecurity special or, or work um, or want to, wants to be a CSI and, and that's a reality to yeah. people like you. Thank you, you know, for folks like you and, and, and people like Laura to expose young adults early on that these are options that they have. I also like the idea that you remind parents about financial um, um, types of workshops that you have for them. I know one of the things that you take a lot of pride in is days that you've set aside for parents and students to to work on FAFSA. I mean, that's fascinating how you've set that up, and that's a that's one of the initiatives that the Austin Chamber has done. Mm -hmm. Now, I want our viewers to understand that what Quilan has presented to you, even though it's being done here locally uh, in Austin, this model can be replicated in other parts of the country. And so, but it's just getting out there, working closely with the workforce boards. And then of course the folks in um, in the ISD. So thank you for that. I don't know if you want to add anything to what you're doing for the FASFO, but I find that fascinating and how that's a, a key role in what Lori does. You know, um, we we experimented with the text messaging capabilities and found it to be very successful, especially as a last minute reminders. We do have, like I mentioned earlier, fifty about fifty to sixty plus events each year. Uh, to help students and their families fill in uh, financial aid. And those text messaging capabilities are great reminders, even for opportunities like you have a university visiting Austin this week and you've got to be there uh, for that particular event. We use that platform also to send reminders on those as well. So that's why we're exploring uh, other capabilities with what we have on um, some of the upskilling opportunities that we might have in the region or job opportunities or even internship opportunities as well. Well, thank you. And, 
And thank you for going over that. And both you and Lori have both referenced, you know, the, um, um, the, those individuals that are interested in internships, which we, uh, we have programs set aside with the Texas Workforce uh, Commission, where we focus on um, a relationship with the industry and they've allowed us to have these, um, these um, uh, internship possibilities for young adults. And then of course, talking about apprenticeship, the value of an apprenticeship program. So we appreciate both of you. So with that said, uh, we go from sixth to twelfth grade, where we're talking to young adults about what career path they want to take or educational path, and then you got Quilan who is talking about, hey, let's get that FAFSA filled out or let's get that all that paperwork in. And here, parents, you know, using our text reminder platform, hey, remember that you got to fill out that in paperwork so that you can go to college. Well, in my opinion, anything after high school is considered college. So next in line, I have a good friend of mine who is the Vice President at Lamar Institute of Technology, Mr. David Mosley, who's been involved and engaged with conversations with the Texas Workforce Commission since day one. Now we know that many of those that are participating today, um, that are watching us, I should say, um, have some type of signing day that maybe takes place in their state, um, but this is what we've done. We, at one point, used to participate in a national signing day where we would get individuals early on that were looking at continuing their education, signing that letter of commitment that they wanted to continue their education in a certain field. And so what we thought we would do, like many of you have done, and that is to take ownership of this. So we were very fortunate last year with the help of James White, a representative here out of the Beaumont area, to help us identify that sometime in March, prior to individuals committing to a college, um, that we could assist them again, like Quilan does with the uh, FAFSA, but also talk to them about, you know, what career did you want to pursue? And, um, and, and this was a great fit for you. And so as I referenced earlier, individuals should have options, not alternatives. And Lamar Institute of Technology is a great option that young individuals have. So I have David Mosley and I am going to uh, turn it over to him where he's gonna talk a little bit about the Texas Career Signing Day. David? Thank you, Commissioner Alvarez. Uh, and thank you again for, uh, birthing the, the idea of a Texas or, or Lone Star State uh, CTE signing day. That occurred on March 5th, uh, 2019. And it's my understanding that this is the brainchild of, uh, of yourself, Representative James White and, and my president of Lamar Institute of Technology, Dr. Lonnie Howard. Uh, the design was to provide recognition of the important role that career and technical education or CTE curriculum provides an ensuing or excuse me, ensuring a skilled future workforce. This was then followed by an actual CTE signing day by four LIT students at the TWC offices. Is, and that's the picture you see right now. Uh, from left to right, you're looking at Nicholas Walker, a good friend of mine, uh, has become a good friend and a mentee of mine. Uh, to his left is Savannah Mitchell. Uh, to her left is Seth Carl. And to his left is uh, Jayala Beheth. Uh, Nick is an advanced engine technology student. He, his dreams include uh, graduating from LIT with his associate's degree, transferring across the street to Lamar University and pursuing mechanical engineering uh, with the aspiration of becoming a, a actual designer at Porsche or BMW. So starting from humble beginnings and going to very lofty goals, um, Savannah is actually a homeschool dual credit student who uh, after signing chose occupational safety and health administration. She's actually been offered a job pre-graduation and moving to Longview in the next year at a salary over $70,000, which is just amazing. Uh, Seth Carl is another dual credit homeschool student who is uh, planning to transfer to the uni a university and pursue photography with a, a goal of becoming a National Geographic uh, photographer and Jayala is uh, pursuing biology sciences, our two-year degree, and wants to uh, transfer as well and then become uh, a research biologist. Uh, you can go to the next slide. This actually, this picture actually represents um, one of our early college uh, high schools. Uh, under the leadership of our president, Dr. Lonnie L. Howard, uh, we've been identified, LIT has been identified by the U.S. Department of Education on their collegescorecard.gov 
as being number one in the state of Texas and number 10 in the nation for graduates with the highest median salary outcomes. And with our over 8,000 credit and non-credit students, our programs range from process operating technology to dental hygiene with a placement rate of over 92%. We do have two early college high schools and this is a picture of one of those. Uh, we also have embedded in one of those early college high schools, a petrochemical industry cluster innovative academy or ICIA. And most recently, uh, Commissioner Alvarez, we have created a rural career and technical education consortium that's made up of six small rural ISDs that gather at a central hub where they can enroll in one of your favorites, cybersecurity, emergency management services, or welding programs as of last fall. We have more programs planned for this location and to speak to your idea of scalability, the idea is that if we can accomplish this in Jasper County, Texas, uh, this can be done throughout the state or even the nation. Uh, many of these schools do not have access to post-secondary education um, and they're required by TEA to actually provide those opportunities. And so we believe we've figured out a way, a model to actually uh, provide this in a way that uh, is both cost efficient, but also provides a great education, post-secondary education to rural students. So we, we all agree career and technical education has great value and benefit both in the short term and the long term. And LIT not only produces great students, it produces degrees that work and that is our tagline. Um, as demand for highly skilled workers continue to grow across Texas, the narrative taught to students in classrooms across the state place a higher value on traditional four-year degrees. But the Bureau of Labor Statistics estimate that between 2012 and 2022, there will be over 50 million career openings for CTE graduates in 16 different career clusters. CTE Signing Day aims to encourage students to take the less traditional role and consider their career prospects and future earnings. Um, Texas two-year colleges continue to triumph in the breadth of credentials they offer to students of all ages including occupational certificates, industry certified training programs, and two-year associate degrees. Not all students are interested in the traditional four-year college pathway, and each individual must choose their own pathway. Uh, speaking to the momentum, this is actually, uh, the early college high school is a cohort-based model. This is actually the third cohort year for these. I was uh, blessed to participate in each of the cohort years, and I wish I had a picture of the year before because there were 120 students, but there were probably only about 25 parents in the room. The next year, as a result of CTE signing day and the momentum that was created by the buzz around this idea that we value education at a two-year school, we actually had standing room only and we had more parents than students uh, gathered in our multi-purpose center. Uh, David, if I may interrupt you, since we're on this slide. Sure. I love the fact that you have parents and then they have their younger brothers or sisters in the audience. They're clapping. I mean, what a joyous day. It is. I mean, I'm looking at that, we have people that are clapping. They have their hands over their head. Um, you know, the, there's somebody that's speaking from the podium and, and people are taking pictures of, of, their, of their students or, and of their, of their kids uh, making that commitment to continue their, their education. I mean, how exciting is that? I, that must have brought you such great joy, you know? It really does. It, it, it really helps uh, affirm your, your career choice to work in education, to see this kind of family involvement. The thing that you may or may not be able to discern from this picture is that uh, an early college high school by design targets at-risk students. Uh, LIT's uh, early college high school with the um, Beaumont Independent School District was actually uh, recognized by the tri-agency visit uh, for the outcomes. We have ninth and 10th graders who are passing the college readiness tests that most students don't take until they graduate from high school. So these are ninth and 10th graders whose uh, plans did not include college, who are now excited about entering uh, not just a, a college, but a career. So petrochemical in our area is very strong. I like your point that one size does not fit all, but that doesn't prevent each uh, area from tailoring their uh, programs to fit the needs of their area, right? So these students are 90% uh, students of color. Uh, they, they're first generation. 
none of their parents or uh, anyone in their family has ever been to college. So you're actually changing the paradigm for our community by providing these opportunities. And you're creating a buzz around the idea that, that we value as a society education, not just sports. And I think that was really telling is that every high school student dreams of entering NCAA or NBA, NFL, NHL, wherever you live. The, the statistics are telling. 0.02% ever make it to the MBA. But every one of these students can enter into a, a career that will provide for them and, for, and change their family tree for generations, not just theirs, but their entire family. So if you will ex advance the slide. The next slide is actually a, an example of a, of a signing day. The students, um, with support from the college, we actually provide the logistic planning and the templates for them to sign and we invite all of the students to come see these few student leaders uh, sign to commit to come to our college. Um, I think that's important in several different ways. It provides a tangible opportunity to value and encourage these students to become peer leaders by signing this letter of intent. To enroll at our college or your college with a commitment both to our college but their future careers. Um, the response from our local ISDs has been very positive. We, we hosted five last year. We're up until COVID-19, uh, we actually had uh, 10, uh, 10 ISDs on uh, tap for participation. Um, the college really acts as a catalyst by providing the idea, the template, and, and a pathway to success. Uh, with COVID-19, we're looking for ways to overcome the challenges of gatherings of less than 10 people. So one of the things that we're talking about doing is a, a virtual signing day. Great uh, idea. As, as Governor Abbott allows schools to gather again, uh, we will continue to work on those, those goals. Um, and again, just thank you so much for the leadership of TWC, Representative James White and, and my president who saw this as an opportunity to, to really help the, the students and the, the workforce at the same time. Well, I just wanted to recognize on this slide, since we're there, you know, seeing that all these young individuals, and I, I see myself, you know, first generation, like many of us, to go to college and, and signing that letter of commitment, you know, whether it's a Division I football uh, letter of intent or, or continuing your education, I mean, they both must give the parents pride. And so I also like the idea that it was done on a local television station, and there's a young man it's the closest to us, it's got a welding helmet right next to him. So how cool is that, you know? And so, um, David, you do great work. I can see the, the relationship that you have with our workforce specialists has certainly been very valuable. And so thank you for that. And again, um, David's information is on the screen here. Um, many of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, initiatives um, that we talk about, you know, are, are um, we, we try to do as much as we can to promote them. These two specifically were something that we uh, rolled out in back in 2019. So I want to thank all our panelists for doing such a great job of providing our students with great information, um, making sure that we can support everyone regardless of what career path they want to take. Uh, again, there, there's, um, you know, we, we all need uh, folks that are in the career and technology education field. And, and so thank you for providing them with the, um, the information needed, the tools they need to be successful whether it's you know, working through the chamber and the business community, working with our partners in higher ed, and then of course with our workforce specialists that complement what our counselors do, our great counselors in the state do. Um, so this is the conclusion of our presentation. Um, I would, uh, I would um, let me get this. And so um, you could download, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm sure Lori would be okay with this, you could download our workforce specialist training manual, which Lori made for each one of her specialists, and she's made extras. Um, and uh, the website is gonna be on the very last slide of this presentation. Um, and so we'll be more than happy to share that with you, unless Lori, you would like to at this time, share that, uh, I don't know if you know it offhand, if you don't, we have it, and it's on the last slide of our uh -huh. presentation, because it is, it is quite lengthy. Yes. Uh, but, but we do know that it's a great manual, and it, and it identifies internships, uh, it identifies apprenticeships, the value of apprenticeships, mm -hmm. uh, conversations that we've had with the business community. Uh, and I think it's after this slide here. 
um, that we can show everyone. There it is. Um, and so we, we certainly encourage you. It's on our website. And of course, you can download it. Um, if you'd like some more information on the specifics on what Lori does and how she's been able to accommodate the needs of both our community, our business, business community and our chamber folks. Um, so this concludes our presentation. I hope this was informative. It was certainly an, um, two initiatives that, that complement one another. Um, it's been very successful. Unfortunately, we've had to change the way we think because of COVID-19. But again, what we have put forth can be replicated in any part of, this, of the country. Uh, and we certainly invite you to continue the conversations with our panelists. Each one of them has provided you with a, um, uh, their email addresses. Uh, if you would like some more information regarding um, any of our um, presentations, you can certainly look at our website at uh, texasworkforce.org. Um, there will be a section there that we will designate for anyone who may have uh, wanted some more information regarding any of uh, our panelists. And of course, they did share with you um, their email and their phone numbers. With that, we want to thank our panelists for joining us today and everyone who took time out of their schedules to, to, to visit us and learn a little bit more about uh, the career pathways for seniors. With that, thank you very much and we look forward to seeing all of you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.